Hello, friends. It's Friday. It's been a long week, a busy week. Uh, I am tired of thinking about ancient aliens and pseudo-archaeology and all that crap, and because it is my YouTube channel, I'm going to do something different. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Uh, I wanted to figure out, you know, I see people doing a little video and video things, and I thought that would be good to understand how to do that so I can use it for other content, so I can kind of react to videos and it might make editing easier. But anyway, I want to talk about the new Metallica cover. I became aware of it on a sleepless night this week. I think it was Tuesday night. I had one of those nights where I woke up 1.30, 2 o'clock, mind was racing, couldn't go back to sleep. So I looked at my phone and I saw Metallica had covered an Elton John song. So I clicked on it and it was the middle of the night. So I was listening to it very, very quietly. Uh, but because I was then up, I never ended up going back to sleep that night. So I watched it several times and I love it. I think they just knocked this out of the park. So I was going to do a, my first attempt at a reaction to a song. Who knows whether YouTube will still be around in 20 years or 30 years, but one of the things that I think is interesting about this technology, you know, I my grandfather died when I was a kid. Don't know much about him at all, other than what people told me. Uh, my grandkids, if they want to know what my reaction was to seeing Metallica perform Funeral for a Friend and uh, Love Lies Bleeding, they can go to YouTube and watch it. So let's have a look. March 20th. Really? Has it been that long? I'm going to be surprised if it had been out since March 20th and I just hadn't seen it. So I actually think it came out this week. I could be wrong. Whatever. Um, starts off with a pretty stock sounding Metallica riff. I can't hear myself talk at all of these, so if I yell, that's why. I like that cream-colored ESP James Hetfield's playing. Woman's got her fist in the air. She knows. She knows. So I'm familiar with the original Elton John song. Not super, super familiar with it, but I, I know it. Uh, and I didn't recognize it yet, so I wasn't sure where they were going with this. I wasn't sure whether this was going to suck or be a train wreck or whatever. Um, I was a pretty big Metallica fan as a teenager and uh, through college, and I kind of jumped off of the ship at the Black Album, which I didn't like. A lot of older Metallica fans didn't like it. They've done a lot of really great things since then, and they did a lot of things that I don't particularly care for. So, you know, I listened to Lux Eterna once. It was all right, it just didn't do anything for me. But I remember the very first time I heard them, I was probably 1987 or 88. We were hanging out at a friend's house after school, banging around on the drums or doing whatever. And uh, one of the neighborhood ne'er-do-wells came in and, uh, you know, he's this kid whose jean jacket always smelled of cigarette smoke. And anyway, he whipped out a tape of uh, Master of Puppets. And I'd heard of Metallica and, you know, the whole kind of thrash revolution was known at that time by even us kids out in the middle of Indiana. We knew about Anthrax and Megadeth and Metallica. I had heard Megadeth's album. I don't, I eventually knew of Anthrax, but I don't remember the timing, uh, but I'd never heard Metallica before. And so we put that in and listened to it. And from those first notes of battery, I was hooked. I'd never heard anything like it and it was great. So, um, at the beginning of this song, as I'm, as I was listening to it the first time, I didn't kind of know where we were yet. I wasn't sure what they were going to do with this. <laughs> Lars has got his tongue out. Put your tongue in, Lars. Here's where I started to recognize it. I know this is part of the theme. Lars has got the caveman drums going. Keep it simple. Very nice harmony. It's exactly what Iron Maiden would have done with the song, too. Kirk Hammond and his $5.8 billion guitar. Here, they know. They know something's coming. 
James Hetfield knows something's coming too. Little run up there. That that's in the original. I went back and listened to it since then. Uh, love that part there, and I love that that's one of the parts that they kept. I wish I could play that fast. I don't think I've ever been able. I would never. I don't play as well now as I used to, but even at my best, I don't think that I could play that that fast and that clean. But sounds sounds great there. <laughs> Yeah, main part of the song. Even Elton John recognizes it. And when I first started listening to this in the middle of the night, I was worried. Or I, worried is not the right word. I was curious how James Hatfield was going to sing an Elton John song. So I thought I wasn't sure whether that was going to hit or not. But as soon as he does his all right here, you know that it's on and he's got this. And that part where Kirk Hammett rolls out, that was a piano part in the original. It sounds great. Sounds great on the $5.2 billion guitar. And you know he's got it. James Hetfield is such a good vocalist in his style. Uh, so good in a lot of ways, but he's phenomenal. I think he just totally nails the song. He's always pulling out those vowels and emphasizing those consonants at the end. You can tell exactly who you're listening to from the very first, oh yeah. All those people are still sitting down. If that was me, I'd be freaking out by now. my favorite part right there look at that smile i'm gonna move myself out i'm gonna move myself over lars there look at the smile on that guy's face he i don't know how old he is he's got to be in his mid 60s at least and you know they have had a career that has spanned decades now they've had their ups and they've had their downs if you watch the movie where they're filming saint anger uh they're they're coming apart at the seams and he you know has had problems with substance abuse and other things but look at this guy he is loving it, and he is in top, top shape. I've watched a lot of Metallica concerts. Uh, now with the miracle of YouTube, you can do that. I saw them twice live uh, during the Andestas for All period. I saw them once play what was then Deer Creek Amphitheater uh, near Noblesville, and I saw them play the Hoosier Dome when they toured with Guns N' Roses, and they were both playing full sets. And that was a pretty wild concert. They played first, and Guns N' Roses was like, two and a half hours late or something like that. And it was getting a little bit hairy in there. Um, anyway, just seeing him loving life right there, you know, and this kind of one off just doing his thing, man, just being the head field. It's great.
I like the way they do that last vocal on the emphasis too. He's where he shouts love there. And it must be Robert Trujillo uh, doing the other shouting. So I don't think Kirk ever really comes up to the microphone. But I like that part. We'll listen to it again. Right there. When you got John singing along to his rock, his own song. Your uh, headfield is playing the piano part. Doesn't play like that very often. Headfield can do. He's he's one of uh, you know his leads that he plays rarely and metallica songs are always really good and i like them a lot more than kirk hammett's leads honestly they're they have a lot more melody and kind of song quality to them you can you can sing along to them kirk plays these what i call spaghetti bowl leads where he's just blah 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 blah. he's just all over the place and the wah wah pedal is going and um but hetfield man he's got a sense of kind of timing and harmony and melody and and everything else and his rhythm playing is so good and so tight and he's an he's amazing the way he can sing and play along with some of those really complex parts he'll often simplify them while the vocal is going on while he's singing but he's got his left and his right hand working like crazy and he is rock solid rock solid he's one of the great rock rhythm guitar players of our generation Keep it a little bit simple at the beginning. Here, here comes some spaghetti. You got the wah spaghetti going on. You get him, Kirk. Get him. Yeah. Short. We go into the spaghetti bowl they shortened this the original is like 11 minutes or something and they got it down to eight uh there's still a lot of parts i was trying to think who else what other band could cover a song like this and make it their own and the way that they did that's one of the things that makes them such a great they're such a great cover band and i always like like they did that cover that bob seger song and i hate i hate bob seger and i hate that song but they did it, and I listened to that over and over and over again. Uh, remarkable. They take songs and they they make them their own in a way that I don't know that anybody else really does. Um, I went and I listened to a Dream Theater's cover of this because I was like, who other you know who else has covered this song? And that was one that popped up. And Dream Theater was like this kind of progressive metal band, very technical that one of my friends in college liked and I went and saw them live with him. It was fine, but they covered it and it sounded almost exactly like the original. Like they used keyboards and pianos and they, the arrangement was the same, at least as much of it that I listened to and the guitar parts were the same. Uh, this is different. This is a band just covering a pretty complex song and just killing it with four people up there.
Perk is off and running again. You know, people hate that St. Anger album. I kind of love it. One of my friends said, you know, you want them just to make Master of Puppets over and over again? Uh, no. So they've done all kinds of different things, which I really admire. And on that St. Anger record, which I thought had a lot of actually really pretty well-written songs, a lot of pretty catchy, cool stuff on it, but they didn't have any Kirk Hammett guitar solos. I don't know if there's a single Kirk Hammett guitar solo on there. I don't love the guys playing, but I kind of love him and the band. Uh, same goes for Lars Ulrich, you know, like, I feel like they just make this unit and have this sound with Hetfield at the center that, um, just, uh, amazing. Double bass going. ovation and they deserve it and if you don't want to take my word for it that that was freaking awesome uh take elton john's word for it he wrote that song and he loved it you can tell that he loved it uh everybody in there is very lucky i think to have gotten to witness that and we're lucky to have it it's a good song and it's now going to be in my rotation anyway if you are a hard rock fan and you have not watched that video on your own uh go find it it's all over the place now um it's a good one one of the things that I like about music is you never know when you're going to hear something that blows your mind or affects you in a certain way. It could come on the radio. You could find it online. Your friends could play it for you. And it makes you feel good. It makes you feel something that you haven't felt in a while. It makes you feel different. Uh, you can never tell when that's going to happen or who's going to do it or how a song is just going to kind of get underneath your skin. Um, so I like when those moments happen. They happen less for me than they used to. You know, when I was brand new and everything was out there to be discovered. Uh, but they still do happen. And sometimes it's old geezers like Metallica that do it. And sometimes it's new stuff. That's a keeper right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's a keeper.